Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After marking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy, destroy the temple and build it back in three days. days. Save, Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. As we prepare for one of the holiest of weeks, journeying through praise, traveling through betrayal, we gather at the foot of the cross and lift our prayers to you. God of steadfast love, you hand us the palm branches so we can have them and hope. You steady us in the days when pain is stuck to the bottom of our lives. When fear is our constant companion, we empty ourselves so you might fill us with joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our humble healer, when our mouths turn numb and we cannot speak our dreams, you tenderly caress our cheeks, leaning over to hear our faltering words. When our arms have grown weak from the burdens we carry, you take them from us and strengthen us with your mercy. We empty ourselves so you might fill us with your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our voice of wisdom, when death hovers so close, we can feel it. 
its cold breath. You come to us, the warm breath of resurrection, pushing aside our fears. When we hesitate to walk into the unknown, stretching before us, you tightly grasp our hands and teach us the first step. We empty ourselves so you might fill us with your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God and community, holy and one, we open our hearts to you, offering all of our needs and concerns, both those we know and those we only feel in the depths of our guts. Bring us together in this place to be your people, and then send us out to be your people in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we wave palm branches in anticipation, we lay our love and our prayers before you. As our voices join together, join with those who cry out, crucify. We lay our hurts and betrayals before you. As we join the women who weep, we lay all that we have before you. Into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way, he breathed his last, he said. Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Hoseas and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Hoseas, saw where the body was laid.
before this week ends, the palm branches will be dying, drying on the roadside. The joyful crowd will become an angry mob and Jesus will replace robes of victory with a crown of thorns. So then go in the knowledge that whatever comes to you this week, you are held in the hand of God, hugged tight, held close. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, uphold you, and give you strength for the journey ahead. Amen. Go in peace. and share this good news. We will have worship in person and online on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. So please um, see the next slide for information about uh, Holy Week. We hope you can join us. Mm -hmm.